Hello and welcome to Fire of Learning. I'm Justin. Charles the Great, Carl der Grosse, or Charlemagne, was born around the year 742 AD. He reigned as King of the Franks from 768 until his death from old age in 814 AD. He is among the most important figures in European and world history as the empire he forged, which extended from the edge of Spain to modern western Poland, laid the foundation for much of modern western Europe. He's a central figure in both French and German history, and therefore was a key figure in both my documentaries on France and Germany, which has led many people to ask, was Charlemagne, and therefore his people as well, German or French? Well, in this video, we'll explore that question and more, so let's get to it. Before we begin, I would like to thank Billy for being our most recent supporter on Patreon. He joins these supporters who make these videos possible. Alright, so to begin, let's back up here. Who are the Franks? Well, I'm not going to tell the whole story, I kind of already did that in my History of France documentary, but to summarize here, the Franks were a group of people who hailed from modern day Germany and the Low Countries in ancient times. They were a Germanic tribe first mentioned by the Romans specifically in the 3rd century AD as a people who lived on the edge of the empire in the Lower and Middle Rhine area, the Lower Rhine being in the north around the modern Netherlands. As the Roman Empire began collapsing in the 4th and 5th centuries, they joined many other Germanic tribes in migrating into land that the Romans could not defend and began settling down and taking over. Not long after Western Rome fell, the Germanic tribes began to compete with each other more intensely. The Franks, under their king Clovis, would be a major winner. By the end of Clovis' reign in 511, the Franks controlled much of modern day France. Though they had a complicated system called partible inheritance, in which the lands of the kings of the Franks were divided among their sons after their death, as a people, the Franks retained this land and spread into others through conquest, namely parts of Germany, in the two and a half centuries following, which led up to Charlemagne. These Franks were never kicked out of France. The French people considered their monarchy to have begun with Clovis' conversion to Catholicism. Even the name France, as you may suspect, comes from the word Francia. Anyway, Charlemagne, as I said, came to power in 768. His brother, who was also given a half of the domain, died of natural causes soon after, allowing Charlemagne the unique opportunity to lay claim to all of Francia. After having done so, he began his long and successful rule, conquering much of Italy and, slowly but surely, essentially all of modern-day Germany and numerous other areas of Europe as well. Having united much of Western Europe in 800 AD, Charlemagne was crowned Emperor of Rome by the Pope. This is a relevant point. With this crowning, Charlemagne was seen as the true, actual emperor of the Western Roman Empire, the successor to Romulus Augustulus, the last of the Western emperors who was deposed in 476. It was a title that would later evolve into Holy Roman Emperor, and later Holy Roman Emperors would likewise claim to be Romans. However, though Charlemagne held dominion over much of the West, it was not an actual resurrection of the Western Roman Empire. His people preferred their Frankish identity, and regardless, the Frankish Empire did not long outlive his son. When his son, named Louis the Pious, died, the empire was split in three. West Francia, Middle Francia, and East Francia. Middle Francia broke apart into other countries, West Francia became France, and East Francia became the Holy Roman Empire, which became Germany. After the brief reign of Charles the Fat, who was overthrown in 887, these lands were never again truly united, except briefly twice about a thousand years later. So now that we've established that, we can ask, were the Franks, and therefore Charlemagne, Germans or French? Well, frankly, it sort of doesn't make sense to try to label them as either. There was neither Germany nor France in this time period as there is today in the sense of a nation state. So it is an attempt to apply modern labels to a people who predated them. It's anachronistic. It's a little bit like asking, was Augustus Caesar Italian? One would lean towards saying no, but I suppose you can't definitively say no in every way because of Rome's connection with what Italy is today. In some ways, Italy means something very different than it did 2,000 years ago, but in other ways it means the exact same thing. Still, we can look at this in various ways though. 
At this time, there were of course important differences between what we would call West and East Francia, in terms of things like language, culture, and for a while in the beginning, before things like the wars with the Saxons, religion. But Charlemagne did make an effort to try to minimize these differences, especially religious ones. Frankish people were moved into areas Charlemagne had conquered and assimilated into the local population. In West Francia, what had occurred over the past few centuries was a Germanic people taking over what was Roman Gaul. Essentially, Francia consisted of a Germanic elite sort of ruling over a people that had been Gallo-Romans, or a mix of ethnic Gauls, or Celts, and Romans. Over time, these three groups mixed, giving birth to what would later be the French identity. It's very similar to what happened with England in the sense that England was a Celtic and Roman society that was taken over by Germanic tribes and the three sort of mixed together, giving birth to the English people. And of course there were other important influences to both as well, namely the Norse. An important note is that Germanic and German aren't the same thing. They are closely related for obvious reasons, but Germanic refers to a much broader group of cultures, people, and languages that extended outside of modern Germany even before the migrations into Rome. German tends to refer to the aspects that constitute Germany, and more broadly places like Austria in certain circumstances as well, specifically. Again, it refers to things that hadn't necessarily formed yet by the 9th century. Germans are Germanic, but not all Germanic groups are Germans. This point is further illustrated by asking what language Charlemagne spoke. Neither French nor German. It isn't actually completely clear what he spoke natively, but he probably spoke a dialect of Frankish, which was a Germanic language as opposed to the Gallo-Romance tongue which was developing at the time in West Francia and was distinct from Latin by this point. But again, this was not German, nor even German's main ancestor. I believe actually the closest living language to it today is Luxembourgish. Charlemagne of course also spoke fluent Latin. Eventually though, the Franks would give up their Germanic tongue, and the Gallo-Romance language, though influenced to a noticeable extent by this Frankish tongue, would predominate, becoming French. The French and German identities, in a modern sense, would not develop until much later. France only started to become a united kingdom in the late Middle Ages and Renaissance era, whereas Germany sort of went in the opposite direction for a time, gradually becoming more and more fragmented from the Middle Ages onward until the 19th century. Germany as a nation wasn't formed until 1871, though there was a sense of commonality that developed long before this due to the ties in the Holy Roman Empire, which, following the Thirty Years' War, as Voltaire so famously noticed, could hardly be called a state, much less an empire. However, I would say that there is an extent to which the French identify more with the Franks than the Germans do. And even in German today, France is known as the Dominion of the Franks, or Frankreich. In the much later age of imperialism and nationalism, you had examples of the French comparing themselves to the Franks, specifically Charlemagne. A notable example of this being Napoleon's frequent use of bees in the symbolism of his monarchy and empire, which were a symbol of the Franks that he took to replace the Bourbon fleur-de-lis, shown here. Well actually I believe there's some debate that to the Franks they were actually cicadas, but that's beside the point. This is another famous portrayal of that is actually from a painting from 1898 by Henri Palmotte, Napoleon au trône de Charlemagne, Napoleon at the throne of Charlemagne. Likewise, German nationalists of the 20th century identified with the Saxon leader Widukind, who led a long and bloody resistance against Charlemagne's invasions. He became a popular symbol of resisting the French invader in that time period to the German people. Regardless of this modern symbolism, however, ultimately, the simplest answer is that Charlemagne was neither French nor German. He was a Frank. The Franks were neither French nor German. They were an important common ancestor to both nations, and therefore Charlemagne is considered a founding father, so to speak, of both nations. Most definitely not the sole ancestor or influence, but one of doubtless importance. Furthermore, I would add, just as an important note, that the Franks were an important ancestor of Belgium, the Netherlands, Luxembourg, Austria, parts of Italy, and other areas of Europe as well. 
Alright, hopefully I've answered this question without sparking a war over Alsace Lorraine in the comments. And hopefully you enjoyed this video. If so, I invite you to come check out the rest of my videos, specifically my videos on French and German history, and to subscribe to see more videos like this in the future. A special thanks to our Patreon supporters who make these videos possible. To join them and help support the channel, you can find a link to Patreon in the description. We are also on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, so come check us out there too. Merci, or maybe danke, or mer... Don't. How about just thank you for watching.